Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome to the Social Regressive. We're standing out here in the Oklahoma pre-summer. It's quite warm and we're gonna be shooting the rifle that you guys have been asking about. This is the Savage 110 Scout. You can see that the small scope that we have on here is mounted really far forward. We have irons at the rear and at the front. If you wanna take a close look at everything that came in the box with this rifle, make sure you check out the previous video. This is all leading up to one great big overall review of this rifle. We're going to be testing it in all kinds of situations. I mostly wanna test this in realistic situations where uh, this is designed to be shot anywhere from zero to about 450 yards, somewhere in there, and mostly shot offhand or from some kind of hasty rest, uh, like braced up against a tree or something, and so we will be testing this rifle under those circumstances. For now, though, I wanted to have a little bit of fun. You can see that I have a suppressor mounted on the end of this. The rifle does come threaded, and it has one of the neatest little uh, muzzle brakes that I have ever seen. Wait until that final review. I'll show you how it works, because it is really darn slick. Uh, I can't believe that no one ever thought of it before, or at least I haven't seen it before. Uh, really neat the way that it attaches. Yeah, we're going to be shooting quiet today, and we're going to be shooting at really close range, because I've been wondering myself how much damage a subsonic 308 can do. And we're at very close range right now. Um, you know, these can definitely be shot at longer ranges. I actually sighted these in at uh, 100 yards. But today we're just gonna see what we can break back here. I have an AR500 target here on the left, and I have just a, a steel pan that I painted orange, and behind it we have some water jugs. So we're gonna see what kind of mess this can make. Now for foil, we're actually going to start out with the good old Ruger 1022. This is shooting some subsonics, same speed. They're, these are both clocking in at about 1,050 feet per second, and these right here weigh 40 grains. These are really nice uh, loads from CCI. Uh, they come in those kind of long 100 round bricks, and yeah, these shoot very well in my testing. They group very tightly, they're hollow points, so they're meant for hunting, they're meant for, you know, shooting squirrels, uh, rabbits, other small game like that. And yes, they are very quiet, so I'm not even gonna bother putting a suppressor on the end today. And we're just gonna take a shot at each of these and we're gonna see what happens. I'm gonna shoot the, uh, the, the, the silhouette first just to see if it can even move that plate. And then we're gonna shoot at the pan to see if this can actually go through. I have both of these angled away from me so that if something does bounce, it's gonna go off to the side over there, hopefully. Okay, that looked like nothing happened. Well, I was expecting not to punch through that pan. I've had some of these pans out here before that the bullets are just bounced off if they're 22s, but I was wrong. Let's see what we can do with this. There's definitely going to be a difference in energy. We're talking about the same speed, but instead of a 40 grain bullet, we're looking at a 208 grain AMAX bullet. Yeah, it's gonna hit with probably about the same power as a 357 Magnum at this range. Might actually be a little bit uh, harder than that. I'll actually put the ballistics on the screen here for you to see. Well, let's see if we can rock these things. Let's go down and check out the damage. It does look like it's pretty profound. Uh, and I gotta say, just from shooting this just now, these two shots, this action is the buttery smooth action that I'd been hoping for from this rifle. This has an Accuracy International single stack magazine instead of some of the double stacks that you get on other rifles. And on the Model 10 GRS, when we had this same mag, which is a, a, a Magpul P-Mag, a 10 rounder, uh, it, it would just made the whole rifle just so smooth and so fun to handle, really fingertippy, and yeah, it still is. Oh, that's so slick. <laughs> that feels great. Uh, let's go see the damage. All right, there's our shot. Center punched it. I was hoping that I got this sighted in okay. It was pretty hasty this morning, but there it is. And then right behind it, leaning up against this jug, straight through the neck. Jug number two 
was this guy right here. And it looks like it kind of went through the side, so it went in right here. And then look at how, look at the damage on this. It is torn all to bits. The backside is blasted right out. And then jug number two, or jug number three, which is which? I can't tell if this is entry or exit. I can't remember how I had this. Oh, this must be entry right here. It still has some spray paint on it. So there you go, entry. So that's quite a big hole there. And then exit right back here. And I don't see any chunks in the water, so it still had enough energy to plow on through. That bullet probably deformed a whole lot and may have actually gone to bits. This is a bullet that's designed to fragment. Uh, it, I mean, it's really a target bullet, but it acts like a varmint bullet, so it just explodes when it hits stuff. Moving as slow as it did, it might actually have stayed together, but that's still very dramatic damage. If you like today's test, make sure that you subscribe to the Sosa Regressive and hit the notification button down at the bottom if you're in YouTube. That way you'll get instant updates when we come out with the new tests, because there are going to be a whole bunch more. Not just testing this rifle in various situations, but testing the ammunition and seeing what they sound like, uh, for example. Uh, we've done a whole bunch of tests in the past where we have fired Subsonic 22, Subsonic 223, Supersonic 223, Supersonic 6.5 Creedmoor, and we are going to be shooting these subsonic 308s past a microphone at various ranges to see if we can figure out what the sound is like. We've been hearing that Hollywood pew sound that everybody kind of makes fun of in movies. We actually found that sound when shooting subsonics past a camera. It usually kicks in about uh, 100 yards, 150 yards. And we're gonna see if this makes that sound. There have been a lot of guesses on the channel about what makes that sound happen. If it's the hollow point, you know, some kind of standing wave inside that hollow point as it goes past, is it a standing wave behind the bullet? Uh, maybe is it the, some kind of sound waves crushed in front of the bullet? Uh, nobody knows, but since these are actually pointed bullets, these are those Hornady AMAX, we're gonna at least rule out the hollow point if we can indeed still hear that pew sound, that thwip sound. So we have a whole bunch of other tests. We're actually gonna be testing subsonic 6.5 Creedmoor as well for damage, just like we've done here, and figuring out what the sound of that is like to see uh, if it is indeed a viable way to shoot. And actually, since we're really talking about it here, I think that this is a really viable round, a 308 subsonic, a heavier subsonic. It's going to perform actually, you know, better than a nine millimeter. It's going to move through the air a whole lot slicker because these are slicker bullets and it's going to have a really nasty impact. So I think that these could be very useful if you're on, you know, a farm, if you're on a homestead, if you want to be able to maybe take care of varmints where you have neighbors around, you want to just be able to do things quietly. I think that this is a really neat way to load up. And this is actually using a technique that I talked about in a previous video, I'll link to it, where I made subsonic 6.5 Creedmoor and I used uh, Trail Boss powder to make it happen. This is pretty much the exact same thing. All I did was just use a, a different uh, load, of course, for 308 and for these heavier bullets but these things are just trucking on out. And yeah, today was a lot of fun. If you wanna get involved, become a patron of the Destructive Arts. I'll put the link to the Patreon account here. And it's folks like those that are coming up with some of these crazy ideas for things that we can shoot, things that we can test. Get involved, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.